Hey everyone, welcome to Our Small Footprint. Uh, today's video is a kitchen video. Uh, it is, we filled the sausages, so we minced up all that pork that we'd marinated, that Daryl had marinated for me. Filled sausage casings, used the leftovers to make meatballs. We made walnut chocolate chip zucchini bread with some of the zucchini we got. And we did uh, dinner which was a pasta bag with some of those meatballs, some of my jarred pasta sauce and a dairy free cheese sauce that I made in the Thermix as well. So all of that was in today's video. So uh, enjoy watching and seeing what we got up to in the kitchen today. And I will see you again in the next day or so. Thanks guys. Oh, I forgot to mention, I tried some new liners from Kmart, some uh, like loaf tin and cake tin liners, and they were really good. So I've only used them once. I'll wash them and then use them again. And I'll let you know how they go the second time around, because sometimes when you use these things, the first time you wash them, they lose a bit of their efficacy the next time. So I will let you know on that. So just wanted to let you know that I used them today in the video uh, and I'll mention it when I do the voiceover, but they worked really well. Thanks. So first point of call for the day was we had to get started working on some of this produce that I got from the hamper. So we have the zucchini that needs working on. So one of the first things I did was I grated up some of the zucchini and put it in a colander to drain. Uh, I just used a box grater. It's a bit hard on my hands, but I was only doing a fairly small amount. So I decided that I wasn't going to dirty my KitchenAid drum grater attachment for this lot. Uh, so I just took my time, used a box grater and grated it. Now I can use the Thermomix to grate zucchini, but it ends up quite uh, small pieces. Like it ends up very small chunks. And for a lot of things, I really like the longer grate shapes that you get using a box grater or the drum grater on the KitchenAid or that sort of thing. Those longer slivers are my preference for a range of things that I cook if I'm hiding the zucchini in something it doesn't matter like if I'm putting it in spaghetti bolognese or I'm doing something like that it doesn't matter what texture it is but for something that's baked into it or a zucchini slice or a zucchini fritter I much prefer those slivers rather than the little tiny dices that the Thermomix will do so uh, it's worth the effort for me when I'm making this sort of thing to do those uh, once I put that in the colander I put it aside to drain some of the excess liquid off to come back to and then I started on the apples so I'm going to make apple sauce which will then turn into apple butter uh, and I'm going to use my pressure canner or pressure cooker that it does both uh, to do that again because it worked so well last time so all I did was I got my apples and I ch chunked them up really um, big I took the cores out and that's it just chunked them up and threw them into the pressure cooker uh, I put about two cups of water on the bottom so that it wouldn't burn to the bottom and then I just filled the pot up with as many apples as would fit up to the max line uh, it reduces a lot obviously so it's only going to end up like I don't know a third full by the end of it but uh, so I put as much as I possibly can in initially and then put the canner the cooker under pressure for about about eight to ten minutes is how long I leave it under pressure for and then I just turn it off and let it come back down afterwards so that was started as well once I got that full I came back to the zucchini and I made some zucchini bread so I fiddled a little bit with a recipe I have a whole bunch of walnuts at the moment because I got four kilo bag or a three kilo bag um, short dated from honest to goodness when I did the order so I've been using walnuts in a bunch of different things uh, and decided to do some zucchini bread with half choc chip half walnuts in it as well so I used fairly standard I um, let me make this one more time before I give you the recipe because it was a little bit crumbly when I cut it uh, so I mixed all I did all the usual that you do I did about 800 grams of zucchini for this one and I mixed all the wet ingredients together first the zucchini and the eggs and oil and all that sort of thing I did use olive oil in this I would have preferred to have used coconut oil but it's cold at the moment and if I melted it and then added it it would have clumped up anyway so I just used olive oil and you can even tell how cold it is because that olive oil is <laughs> cloudy as well so I mixed all the wet ingredients as normal mixed all the dry ingredients 
as normal. I chopped up the walnuts so that they were in smaller chunks. So I just rough cut them up and added, uh, I think I added, I want to say 100 grams of walnuts, 100 grams of chocolate chips. It might have been double that when I think about the recipe. I'll have to have a look. But I added walnuts and chocolate chips to the zucchini bread. It has cinnamon in it as well. Uh, a bit of sugar, nothing extensive. Uh, and a whole lot of zucchini so then I folded the dry into the wet in three batches so uh, slowly very slowly for me because this was horrible to mix really should have probably done half the recipe in the KitchenAid so I could use it to stir and just done two batches but anyway I managed uh, my hands and wrists are not real happy with me at the moment so I've been struggling a little bit but I got it together with breaks I managed to fold it all together I put two Lunch two loaf tins and I probably should have used my Mackey's bread tins for it when I look at the quantity of of batter that I used but it worked okay in these ones I bought some new Kmart uh, loaf and cake tin liners they're black and they have these slits that make them fold I really liked them uh, they worked they folded into the loaf tins really well I'm going to see how well they fit into the Mackey's tins because they're a non-standard size loaf tin but I think that they'll work for that as well um, and I so I lined both the tins with these and I split the batter just between the two fairly full uh, which is why I reckon I should use the Mackey's tins but uh, they fit and they cooked fine in it they didn't overflow or anything like that uh, the line has probably helped because they rise above the sides of the tin which is kind of nice uh, but I filled those two tins and then put them in the barbecue I got this lovely little package today from Tracy thank you very much Tracy I am going to give this juicer attachment a go and the uh hack it or whatever they called the mince break wrapper thing as well I'm very appreciative thank you very much Tracy after that we got to mince the pork so Daryl had marinated some pork for me uh, when I had to go to Toowoomba or I can't remember he did it for me he marinated the mince for me the pork chunks for me from my recipe book um, so Sonnet helped me to mince it all so all I did was I ch chopped it up into chunks that were the right size for the mincer and she propped herself up on a stool and put the pressure in the mincer to push the meat through and helped me to get all of that done once it was all minced uh, I added a little bit of maple because my recipe didn't stay uh, my recipe had caramelized onion in it but we'd run out of jars of that so Daryl didn't add that and I normally add some cowboy candy or something and it wasn't on the recipe so it was a little dry so I added some maple to give it some bit more moisture and then I used my hands just to emulsify the mince a little bit it uh, we did it on a fairly fine grind but if you just work the mince a little bit before you put it through the sausage casings then the they will hold together better though they have more of a texture of a sausage than just minced meat in casings so I did that uh, got the bread out of the oven I couldn't tell you how long it took to cook which is why I'm going to do it again uh, because I forgot what time I put it on so I just kept on checking it uh, it was a little bit crumbly when I was slicing it but I was slicing it warm so you know that's never the best time to slice a hot a, a, a quick bread <laughs> when it's warm uh, so it was cooked all the way through though the chocolate chips and the walnuts were well distributed through the mix and the kids really liked it it's quite tasty it's not overly sweet uh, but it is very much sweet enough with those chunks of nut and chocolate through them and these were the honest to goodness dairy free chocolate chips which is really nice to have as well stored in the freezer so let me make that again this week and then once I make it once more and make sure that it worked then I will share the recipe for that one uh, after that we cleared the space we had to stuff the sausages so I use uh, hog casings from the casing boutique and they were soaked from the day before uh, we have this vertical sausage stuffer um, it has a five kilo hopper which is really great uh, but it doesn't clamp to a bench or anything which is really painful we need to sort of find a permanent place for it so that we can bolt it to a bench or something but you also want to be able to remove it to clean it like I it's stainless steel so I spray it and clean it every time it gets used but it would be nice to be able to put it in a sink every now and again uh, so I feed the casings 
onto the sausage attachment. Now we had some problems with the stuffer today. Uh, I think maybe the seal that goes in the top has stretched a little bit and it's not holding its uh, it's not holding properly when you uh, when you're extruding the sausage. It seems to get caught up and gets mint stuck in it and then it's, you, you just can't extrude it anymore. So I'm going to try and order a new um, seal for that. But we have been looking at one of the higher end mincers that has the sausage stuffing attachments and stuff. They just, they use a lot of power. But now that we've got that secondary solar array, it'd be the same as running the Thermomix. So it'd be perfectly feasible. I just have to, they're just another investment. And at the moment we have these things that work, even if they're a little temperamental. So we fed the casings on, filled the hopper. Daryl was cranking it, but we were having a lot of trouble with it this particular time, which we is frustrating because it's already kind of a, messy sort of a job but anyway so we filled all the casings that we could before we gave up on using it once we had all the casings full all I do is I do it in one big ribbon of them as Daryl cranks it because it's just nice and easy to just do it like that so after they're full I use the like a, a cake cooling rack over the top of one of our baking trays to lay them on and then I twist them so I don't measure or anything when I'm doing it I twist them where it feels good to twist them and we had a bit of problems with breakage i sized down my casings this batch and i think i was overfilling them slightly because we were having troubles with the stuffer and then there were slightly thinner casings and anyway there was a few hiccups with this batch of sausages so you twist them as you twist them you want to make sure that you've got the you twist them the opposite direction so you twist the first one away from you and then the next one towards you and that way you're not untwisting the sausages behind you there is a whole video on making sausages on the channel i'll try and remember to link it but if not you can just search it's uh under my channel because there is a whole video about making sausages there where i went into a bit more detail uh, this is what the apples looked like after the eight to ten minutes at pressure so they're a nice caramelly color uh, cooked right down and ready to I cook them a little bit longer uh, I'm not going to get to them today so all I'm going to do is I'm going to simmer them a little bit longer then I'm going to put the lid back on the canner and I'm going to leave them overnight it's getting to negative two ish overnight here so they can stay in the sealed canner overnight and then first thing in the morning as it starts to warm up I'll turn them back on to finish working on them because we had the problems with the seal on the sausage stuffer amongst other things uh, we ended up with some mince left over now this is a pork mince so normally I make sausages with it or I cook it up as a crumble to have in like the uh, Zuppa Toscana soups or um, we use it in breakfast burritos or things like that uh, I don't have any tortillas at the moment I don't have any plans to make any tortillas at the moment there's just a bit too much going on so I didn't have anything really that I wanted to put in burritos and we're don't have a huge surplus of eggs yet at the moment either so again not the greatest thing so i ended up just turning them into meatballs uh i did them about my normal 30 gram measurements which is what i do my beef meatballs and i just cooked them on trays in the barbecue uh, i did walk away to cut firewood with the last batch in there and they overcooked very slightly <laughs> but other than that they're just pork meatballs so they will be good in a variety of things to eat it's that you know they'll get eaten regardless they're basically my sausage mints but in meatball form not quite as fun as having them as sausages but perfectly serviceable so once they were, we they were cooked as you can see there it's a little bit burning but you know they edible they're not so far gone you can't eat them because I had them there and I hadn't planned anything for the kids for dinner yet which is pretty much the way it goes when I'm processing food I get to dinner time and I'm just like I have no idea what we're doing for dinner because I've been doing all this food and I'm over it I don't care anymore so I just cooked up a packet of spiral pasta just a 500 gram packet of spiral pasta just boiled it and then used a jar of my uh, pasta sauce my vegetable tomato pasta sauce I think I added a tin of tomatoes in there as well just to add a bit more liquid I heated the pasta sauce up on the stove and added meatballs into it so that they were warmed back through because they had cooled a bit by this point and then I used my Thermomix to make the vegan cheese sauce so this is basically the same 
cheese sauce that I can make on the stovetop except to have to stand there and stir it. And we have reduced amounts of burners now too that we got rid of the oven. So sometimes it's really awkward as well trying to juggle that. So I really love the fact that with the Thermomix I can just throw all the ingredients in and I can turn it into thicken mode and the sensors in the bowl and the blades detect when it's a cheese sauce and it stops. So basic thing that I always make, it's, uh, I don't know, it's a bit of corn flour, coconut cream, uh, a bit of chicken stock paste, some nutritional yeast, uh, onion powder, garlic powder, salt, that sort of thing. Uh, I don't measure a whole lot of it. I really should make, take more notice of it, but uh, the kids really enjoy it. So it's, and it's, I can make it with cashews if I have time to soak cashews, but I hadn't done it that this particular time. So I just poured the cheese sauce over the top of the pasta that had all the meatballs in it with the sauce and served up as like a pasta bake. They all adored it and they had the leftovers for breakfast the next day. So obviously it went down well. So that was today in the kitchen. Thank you very much for joining me again. And I will have another kitchen day for you tomorrow or the next day, I think, because there's just a lot of produce to get through at the moment. So thank you very much for watching, guys, and I will see you next time.